I got it. I got it. <sighs> yeah. What's up, Yens, guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, I want to continue on with my lake breakdown series, and I want to talk about a smaller impoundment that's local to my area. Now, many of you know, as fishermen here in the state of Pennsylvania, we have a lot of these smaller impoundments throughout the entire state. And a lot of these smaller impoundments are heavily stocked. They're stocked with trout, they're stocked with catfish, they're stocked with bass, so on and so forth. Some of these smaller 30 to 50 acre impoundments give you guys awesome opportunities to catch trophy fish and to really catch numbers of fish right in your local area. Now the lake that I wanna talk about in this particular episode is kinda of near and dear to my heart. I grew up fishing this particular lake since I was about yo big. Now, me and my dad and my brother, we have lots of stories, lots of fishing excursions, lots of first day of trout stories from this place. You know, it's just one of those nostalgic little ponds that I still fish even as an adult. So I wanted to kind of spend some time talking about how I fish not only this particular body of water, but really how I break down these smaller impoundments and where I focus on when I'm on the water or when I'm fishing from shore, which will hopefully translate into me providing you guys with some beneficial information that's gonna help you break down your local impoundments and help you guys catch more fish. All right guys, so the lake that I wanna focus on breaking down in this episode is actually Twin Lakes here in Westmoreland County, just outside of Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Now Twin Lakes is actually split into two lakes. There's an upper and a lower lake. The upper lake is about 20 acres and the lower lake is about 30 acres. So we're talking about relatively small impoundments, you know, in our local areas when we talk about Twin Lakes. Now Twin Lakes is actually surrounded by a large wooded area and it's sort of in that rural farm country here in Westmoreland County. Now Twin Lakes is also owned and operated by Westmoreland County, and it's also protected by the PA Fish and Boat Commission. Twin Lakes is also a part of the Big Bass Regulations, as well as the Panfish Enhancement Regulations, which has to do with the crappie population that lives in the lower lake. Now Twin Lakes is really known for two things. I just mentioned the crappie population, so it's actually known as one of the better crappie fisheries that we have here in the state of Pennsylvania. Also, Twin Lakes is known for the trout stocking program. Both the upper and the lower lakes are heavily stocked with trout throughout the entire year. So let's take a quick look at the schedule so you guys can get a feel for when the trout are gonna be stocked in these lakes, which will help you guys put yourself on some fresh numbers of fish this year. Now, one other thing to mention about Twin Lakes, private boating is actually prohibited. However, certain times of the year, you guys can go to the boathouse and you guys can rent a paddle boat. Now, I know for the first day of trout, we typically rent a paddle boat. It's like 12 or 16 bucks for a half day, which is about four hours. And really, it gives you guys the opportunity to get out onto a lake or a 30 acre impoundment like this and do some fishing. And really that kind of opens up the door for you when you talk about different methods of fishing. So now you can be more effective from a paddle boat by vertical jigging or by trolling even. We do a lot of trolling from a paddle boat for trout early in the year. Now I know the water is fertile in Twin Lakes and I know there's a number of streams that kind of flow into that and that water is really spring fed. So with that said, there's good weed growth and there's good shifting water depths. Now again, I don't know what the max depth is, but I will say this, I have taken a paddle boat out and if you guys are interested in fishing these smaller impoundments, it's always good to take a look at tools that will help you kind of identify and really map out the lake a little bit better. 
Now I have a Hummingbird 120, and this is a little fishing buddy. If you guys can see this. The transducer is here, and there's also a mount that sits on this where you guys can mount this thing on the side of a paddle boat or on the side of a rowboat. Now it's battery operated. So the batteries are in here. You got your power here. And when you actually plug this thing in and you power on, you get a full snapshot of the bottom of the lake as well as the water temperature and the water depth. Tools like this can be really beneficial for you guys when you're talking about fishing these smaller impoundments. Now, as far as the main species that live in Twin Lakes, let's take a look at the chart that I have here. So as you guys can see on this table, Twin Lakes actually has black crappie, white crappie, yellow perch, bluegill, pumpkin seed, green sunfish, channel catfish, largemouth bass, brown bullhead, yellow bullhead, common carp, golden shiner, brown trout, brook trout, rainbow trout, and white suckers. Now a great way to analyze lakes like these or these smaller impoundments is to do Google searches or go out there and do some research and find the biologist reports from previous years. These biologist reports give you guys excellent information that helps you identify what species are in a lake and really what the numbers are, what the size is average, things of that nature. And these are all things that I do when I go out and fish impoundments like Twin Lakes. I always look for that latest biology report to give me as much information as humanly possible before I go out there on the water. Now, a lot of you guys are ice fishermen, and there's actually a false stocking that occurs on Twin Lakes that adds some additional fish to the lake to kind of set us up for that ice fishing season. Now, with those of you that are ice fishermen, there's a lot of good structure in this lake. There's a lot of good weed edges. There's a ton of weeds in Twin Lakes, especially the lower lake. You guys have the opportunity to get out on that ice, get yourself on those weed edges or above those structure points, or in and around that fallen timber, and it creates opportunities for you guys to vertical jig and really locate fish, not only that are stocked or have been stocked, but fish that actually are native and live in this lake. It's good opportunities to catch trout, good opportunities to catch bass, good opportunities to catch catfish, and really your crappie and panfish species. Bottom line here, guys, Twin Lakes Park is an excellent recreation area for you guys to take your family Take the kids out for a picnic, take your girlfriend or your wives out for a hike, walk around the lake, or if you guys are fishermen, you guys can go out there and fish from shore. You have good opportunities to catch multiple species of fish. And if you don't want to fish from shore, just spend a couple of dollars, rent a paddle boat, get yourself out onto the water, and put yourself in a position to fish a small impoundment that has good opportunities for fish. What I'd like to do now though, is I'd like to jump into my markup of the map to show you guys what I look for on these small impoundments like Twin Lakes, give you a couple of spots to think about, and hopefully again, provide you guys with some good information that's gonna help you analyze your local impoundments and put you on some more fish. All right guys, so let's go ahead and zoom in on Twin Lakes in Westmoreland County. So I have my map here, and the first thing you guys are gonna notice once we get zoomed in is the fact that we have the second lake or the upper lake here, which is south, and we're really gonna be focusing on reservoir number one, which is the lower lake. Now, we're gonna work south to north here. So as we zoom in, you're gonna see a lot of different marked off points here all over this map. Again, Twin Lakes is a small impoundment. So you guys can take a lot of what I'm gonna show you here and apply this to your smaller impoundments in your area. So first things first, let's notice this giant wooded area to the left. Now anytime you guys have a wooded area up against a shoreline, you're gonna have the opportunity to fish timber structure or fallen timber. So this entire left side of the map is actually going to include fallen timber up and down the lake. So first things first, when you guys fish Twin Lakes and you're on the left side of this map, just know walking through the woods will give you the ability to get on some of that timber structure that those big old bass like to hide under. I have a couple of hot spots listed in yellow. Now, 
the green lines you guys are going to see are typically fallen timber lines and also weed edges and weed beds. Again, there's a lot of weed beds on this particular lake. So as we're moving here, you're going to notice that the outflow goes in from the top lake to the bottom lake right in this area. Again, this green line on the left is your fallen timber structure. And we're going to have our first weed bed in this particular area. Now, one of my best hot spots here in yellow is this boardwalk structure. Now, you guys are going to see the boardwalk, which is really this path across the lake. And in addition to that, it's got another structure point for you guys for fish to kind of hide under and, and around. So as we look at this, this corner right here where you see the pathway come up, there's a couple of logs sticking out of the water. And then up against this particular structure, this is a big bass hotspot for me. I've caught a lot of bass out of this spot. Uh, Deanna has caught a lot of bass out of this spot. And Corey caught a lot of bass out of this spot in years past. So I marked this off as one of my better areas because of that type of structure. Now this weed bed is actually going to run all along here. And you guys are going to be able to position yourself on the outside weed edge with a paddle boat. Now, the other thing is notice any bass hotspots on the left. Those are usually going to indicate a fallen tree. And that's usually running spinner baits, rattle baits, jigs, soft plastics in and out of those areas. And then usually in summertime, popping bobbers with worms up against that structure, especially when the sun's high, you can get up against those that tree line and be in the shade, those are gonna be some solid hot spots for you. Now, as we work around here, you're gonna see the activity center on the left, or on the right rather. You're gonna see another bass hot spot on the left and also in the middle on that weed edge. And you're gonna see the amphitheater. Now, around this amphitheater, this weed bed kinda of comes around here. And again, if you guys fish the outside weed edge, you're gonna produce fish. There are times where I've taken bottom bouncers and I've essentially taken a paddle boat and I've trolled bottom bouncers with walleye worm harness rigs on them in and around this particular weed edge and I've produced fish. I've produced three pound largemouth, four pound largemouth, and five pound largemouth on this particular point and in and around this area. So you guys can fish top waters, buzz baits, all kinds of stuff on top of those weeds in the heat of summer or you can fish the inside weed edge or the outside weed edge and it will produce fish. Moving here, uh, we're gonna go over to the actual boathouse. Now in front of the boathouse, this weed edge is gonna continue. You guys are gonna have really good dock structure here in and around this area. And especially if you're fishing from shore, you can't fish on the docks, but you can go right up against the boathouse right on this corner right here. And you can actually pitch out right by this boathouse and that's going to allow you guys to catch fish that are sitting right in front of the actual boathouse. All right, so as we move north here, you guys are going to notice again the boathouse. We talked about that. We talked about this weed bed. This weed bed is going to pull all the way around and I've seen a lot of people catch a lot of fish right over top of this weed bed from this actual wall. This is also another spot that I position myself when we go night fishing because Twin Lakes, you guys can go out and buy a night fishing permit and fish for catfish. And this wall is an excellent staging point. So as we take a really good look at the lake here, notice this weed bed circles around. I wanna talk about this corner because I picked up bass on this corner. This is where the riprap starts. And you guys know anytime you have riprap, you're gonna have a transition line and this is a good corner to start. I've caught bass out of here, I've caught a lot of panfish, I've caught catfish, and of course, a lot of trout. Whenever we go trout fishing at Twin Lakes, we focus on this area from this corner down to this corner. And you guys are gonna see the riprap, you're gonna see the spillway and dam, and you're gonna see, I have marked off here, trout hotspots up and down. When they dump the trout in, when they stock the trout from this end of the lake, those trout are gonna disperse through that riprap and in this deeper water, and you guys are gonna see a lot of the trout picked up in this particular area, especially from a paddle boat. Now, as we work our way around the lake here, I have another bass hotspot and a few on the left or the south end 
around this bend, you guys are going to see, again, the fallen timber line. Excellent options for bass fishing. And as we get back to this corner, you're going to see this money hot spot. There's a big rock drop off here. So you guys are going to see a big platform rock in the water, and it's going to drop off into deeper water. This is an excellent, excellent area because it's not far from this one to three feet of shallow water and this hazard. And those fish move in shallow as the water warms up and they hang right back to that rock and hit that drop off later on to get away from the heat in summer. Now, you guys are gonna see one other point in here, Turtle Bay. I've caught a lot of trout down on this end. However, one of the biggest snapping turtles I've ever seen in my life was eating a giant, probably about a 24 to 26 inch Palomino. Had it vertical in the air. I've seen that turtle multiple times and it's always been in this particular area of the lake. So I've deemed this area Turtle Bay. So when you guys hear me talking about Turtle Bay in future videos, in this wall right here, you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. So as we, as we talked here, you know, Twin Lakes in general, this is a great opportunity for you guys to catch bass. And spinner baits, vertical jigging, soft plastics, you know, using buzz baits and top waters in the summer, walleye harnesses and worms, bottom bouncer rigs, all of these things, when you think outside of the box on these smaller impoundments will help you guys catch fish. One last thing about bass fishing, a lot of times it's always a safe bet to take your kids out on a paddle boat, throw on a bobber about 12 inches above your hook and worm, and just cast in and out of that timber. You guys let the bobber hit the water, pump it two or three times, no bite, reel it in, cast it back out on that timber. Work your way all around this particular shoreline from this corner where the hazard is all the way to the bottom end and the south end of the lower Twin Lakes and you guys will produce fish up and down this entire shoreline. Now with that said guys, you need to get out on the water, get on a paddle boat, you know, take some of the technology out there with you, scan the bottom, find some of those structure points That'll help you later in the year when you're talking about ice fishing. All right, guys, one last thing that I forgot to mention is this particular weed bed in this area. Again, we have another weed bed that runs all the way across here, and it runs on this section of the lake right around Turtle Bay. Now, you're going to have an outside weed edge here, but you're also going to have an inside weed edge here. Now, this goes for the same in front of the riprap. So one interesting aspect about this would be positioning yourself on shore, say somewhere in here, and then essentially casting from here to here, and then bringing back your actual lure or your bait back against this weed edge on the outside. So basically when you're casting from shore, you try to get parallel with the weed beds as much as possible, and really rip your jerk baits, rip your crank baits, work those types of baits, even live bait, on the edges of those weeds. So anytime I'm fishing from shore, this particular tip, get yourself on a good angle to be able to work those weed beds effectively. When you're working over top, you know, it doesn't matter. You can position yourself anywhere in front of the beds and then work back. But it's also very good to try to hit those angles and really be methodical. Take your time, work baits through those areas, work the holes in the pockets, and I promise you it will produce fish. So all in all, this is the information that I have on Twin Lakes. Hopefully you guys find this beneficial and hopefully it puts you on some fish in 2019. All right guys, hopefully I was able to give you some good information on the lower Twin Lakes here in Greensburg, Westmoreland County, here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Now, I'm also hoping that this information translates into helping you guys break down some of these smaller impoundments in your local area, which will ultimately lead to you guys catching more fish. So with that said, if you're a local fisherman here in the Greensburg area, or you just like this video overall, go ahead and hit that like button for me. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys like listening to this voice for some reason, talking about the sport of fishing, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. I greatly appreciate it. All right, well, we got a busy week ahead. We got a lot going on. We got Musky Max, March 2nd and 3rd. Dan and I have our first musky trip planned for March 8th, which is a Friday. Looking forward to that. So at this point, I just want to wish everybody a happy and healthy week ahead. 
tight lines, and we will see you guys next time.